Welcome friends to another play date with the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis. My name is CJ Mitchell and I'm the Community Access Coordinator here at CAMP. Did you notice the black and white swirly lines behind me? Aren't they interesting to look at? Well, they fit with the theme for today. Today's theme is cool contrast because it's cool to have contrast in your art. So are you wondering what contrast is in art? Well, let me explain. Contrast is a principle of design related to the juxtaposition of opposites in a work of art. So now you ask, what is juxtaposition? Let's look at the next slide. Juxtaposition is the arrangement or placement of two objects next to, you, next to each other side by side. So juxtaposition compares or contrasts in order to create an interesting effect in a work of art. So to put it simply, contrast basically means differences. And differences in the world make it a little bit more interesting place to live in. So contrast can be created through any differences such as color, texture, size, and even more. So the image behind me is creating contrast by using the colors of yellow and blue mosaics to create an interesting work of art. Even more possibilities of arrangement of opposite elements like light versus dark, rough versus smooth, and small versus large. Also like the small and big mushroom behind me. All right, now let's look at art with cool contrast with our current exhibition, Stories of Resistance. What kind of contrast do you think Andrea Bowers' Resist demonstrates? If you said color, great minds think alike. The cardboard background versus the bright vivid color of the graphic image creates an interesting piece of artwork to look at. We are looking at Disease Thrower Number 4 by Guadalupe Maravilla. What kind of contrast do you think I was thinking about with this installation? Well, with this art, I thought about the contrast between the sculpture that is rough and mute of color compared to the brightness of the purple color walls with the silver lines. Samaya Seduce, filled with wisdom, has a contrast between the letters. Some of the letters are bright and colorful, while some of the letters have texture. And also, there's contrast between the texture of the building made of concrete and the bright, colorful, and textured letters in the message. All right, let's take a look at Twan Andrew Wynn's The Boat People. These are still images taken from the film. The image furthest away is of the main character, and she is holding the sword that's on fire. And then we have a more up-close image. And what's interesting is the contrast of elements. We have fire and water. So the orange and yellow hues of the fire against the background of the blue wet ocean makes for a fascinating image. Let's look at the work of Banu Genetolu, Gerbet's Diary. When we look at it, the tablets look as if they were made long ago but they are sitting on metal shelving that looks like it was made yesterday. So this is a good contrast between something old and something new. All right, let's make some art. Okay, so for today's art activity, we are going to create contrast by using color and shape to create an eye-catching work of art. So for today's activity, you will need construction paper. And you can have a couple of different choices. You don't need all, but if you have all, that's even more fun. You can use crayons, markers, or stickers. And the last thing that you'll need are scissors. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna make these cool sculptures today using contrast colors and forms. 
Right, so to make these cool and interesting forms, and we'll move them to the side, we will need construction paper. So you are going to take a couple of different colors. I think I am going to try. So the first thing you'll do is fold the piece of paper in half lengthwise, kind of like a hot dog. And then to cut it from the crease. Now once you cut out of the crease, you're only going to use one half. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to fold. Well, actually, first let's decorate it. So let's see. I'm thinking I'm going to try stickers. So I have these wonderful little dot stickers. And I'm just going to stick. All over piece of paper. In random spots. And since this is kind of 2D where we'll see both sides, I am also going to put some opposite side. Just put a few more on this side. Flip it over. A few more. Now you don't have to do stickers, but we'll try it with stickers and then I'll show you another way where you can just draw shapes. But I thought the stickers might be fun to try. So there's a great contrast between this yellow and the purple. All right. Okay. So now I have dots on both sides. Now I'm going to take the piece of paper and fold it in half. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I am going to cut, but I'm not going to cut through the fold. So I'm going to make a series of, I guess, three or four lines. I'm going to cut up. And then I'm going to carry up to the edge so I don't cut through the folded paper. Then I'm going to do it again. Trying to keep the same amount of length. One more time. Maybe even two more times. Let's try. So right now I got one, two, three, and then do one more. Four. Right there. All right, cool. So now to open it up. And you have all these different lines. So now you want to fold it in opposite directions. So each line will be folded in the opposite way. So this one I'm folding back. So this one I'll fold forward. This one I'll fold forward. This one I'll fold back. So it's like every other one. And I'm going to do it on this side. So. It starts to stand up already, but you don't really necessarily have to fold the top one. But you do want to fold it in the opposite direction. So it's kind of like a sculpture that has its own footing. That one. So now we have a cool standing. 
sculpture. Let's see, if can show it from this way. That's kind of cool. All right, so I got one. Now, another way we can do it, I'm gonna move that in the is I took an orange piece of paper and I took a paint pen and I just drew a whole bunch of circles on both sides, different sizes. So now I'm gonna take it and fold it. This time, maybe I'll make some baby lines. So that one I'm gonna discard so that it just be a picture. And I don't want to cut into the fold. If not, it'll be a whole bunch of little bitty. Let's see, I did one, two, three. I did three lines this time. So again, the idea is to have the opposite sides so that your sculpture. It's going that way, this way. Maybe it should go the other way. This way. And so yeah, we have another sculpture that stands up. Now, since it didn't draw, I think what would be fun is to maybe try drawing with a crayon. So I have a yellow piece of paper here. And I got a green crayon right here. So I'm just going to draw some zigzag lines. Or if you're good at shapes, it kind of looks like a W, does it? Yeah. An extra W, more like a, a wavy line. All right, I'm going to do the other side. And yellow and green are good contrasting colors. All right. Oh, paper in half again. Let's see. Let's just make. Maybe we'll. That. Oh, and I have to remember not to cut all the way through. Our sculpture won't stand. Okay. And let's do one more. All right. Zigzag lines. My zigzag art. Now, make it stand up. Stands a little differently. Yeah, just like that. All right. I think. Let's see. Now let's look at them. Maybe we'll make like a little sculpture park. 
put them up next to each other. All right, so now I have put together all my little sculptures. So I have this really cool contrasting color, like mini sculpture park. So I hope you enjoyed making these cool contrasting color sculptures. All right. Next up, we have a performance from Dances of India. Enjoy. Hello there, and welcome to Dances of India. My name is Narthana, that's N-A-R-T-A-N-A, -A -A, and that means dance. So today I'm going to um, show you a little bit about Indian dance, and we're gonna talk about the theme of contrast, cool contrast. So what is contrast? Let's say in school you really like pizza and your best friend loves ice cream, but your best friend never eats pizza and you never eat ice cream. Well, that's contrast right there, that you're friends with someone who has contrasting tastes from you. Um, let's say, for example, you like sunny days and your friend likes rainy days. And your friend says, well, I never like sunny days and you never like rainy days. Well, those are contrasts, but you still are friends. Contrast uh, is what makes the world interesting. It opens your mind to different ideas and different tastes. And you realize, well, I can really like someone. They can be my friend, even though they have totally different tastes and ideas than mine. And that's what's cool about contrast. So in terms of Indian dance, we will think about what contrast means. So um, let's begin. Um, in classical Indian dance, which is a very, very old art. It's like over, over 2,000 years old. It has its origins in a book that's over 2,000 years old. Um, they have laid out different hand movements with which you tell stories. Um, for example, this is the sun. Um, this, this can be rain. This is one example of rain. So, um, but what's interesting is with the same hand movement, you can describe contrasting uh, ideas or, or emotions. For example, with the first hand movement, you can say, stop. You can also say, oh, or I'm sorry, not say, because we don't talk when we dance, but we, ex we show expressions with our eyes and with our face, our mouth. Um, so, so we're not gonna say, but we're gonna portray. So we can say, stop, or we can, or we can uh, show, surprise or fright and all with this hand that's all you need and also with this hand we can show a half moon like this and if you do this sorry this this is a quarter moon you could also show a full moon but that's a completely different movement but just to show you, you can show a half moon, and because it's a moon, you can put it high in the sky like this, and a quarter moon. And you can also show with the same hand, carrying like a plate, like if you have to carry a plate to dinner or something. And you can do it gracefully. You can do it like this, gracefully. Um, here's another movement. Uh, we can, with this movement, you, it's flap about your ring finger down. You could show the crown of a king. Uh, you could show the branches of a tree. You can do both hands, I'm sorry. You can show like this, you can show tears. Someone's crying or you're crying, your friend's crying. You can show writing a letter. So with one hand, one hand movement, we can show all these different um, different ideas along with expressions. Um, and this is another hand movement with the thumb up, real simple. So in Indian dance, this can mean a man, a man. It can also mean, who are you? Or, you, or why? So you could actually say, who is this man? And you show it with your eyes. 
So this is how we can show contrast in, um, in our hand movements. And also we show contrast when we show, when we portray a man or a woman. So a woman in traditional Indian dance, females are, it's a very graceful kind of move. The walk, everything, everything is graceful. For example, if you're plucking flowers from a tree, you may have a basket here and you're plucking flowers from a tree. Everything is graceful, and if you're a man as well, you're still graceful. You just you just uh, walk a little more stiff. Oh, here's a tree and the flowers. It's slightly different in the way in the way you uh, show the gestures of your body. And uh, uh, let's show something else. Let's talk about the sun. So this is the sun, right? It's the easiest way to portray the sun. But in the movement I just showed you with the ring finger down, like this, you can show the sun and its rays. Uh, and I suppose it's a cold winter day, so it's really cold, but the sun makes it so much better. So you can show this and the sun. So there are different ways of portraying um, our relationship with um, the sun, nature as well, contrasting ways. You can. Oh, the movement I showed you earlier, this movement, if you turn it around and put your other hand like this, hook the thumbs, look, you have a bird. So, so this is the way we show contrasting emotions and ideas in Indian dance. So now I'm going to do a dance, which is a beautiful dance. It's from a movie, a Bollywood movie. If any, anyone out there, if your parents watch Bollywood, this is a classic Bollywood film. This is from 1994, I think, and it's called uh, 1942, A Love Story. And the song um, I'm going to dance to is a song about, you can say, uh, it could be a prince looking at a princess. And as soon as he sees her, he's just overwhelmed. And he describes her beauty and what she makes him feel. So she makes him dream of and feel like the rays of the sun, uh, like a deer. So this is a deer right here, a deer. I, mean, I want to make sure that you can see this, a deer in a forest, a beautiful deer. Um, she makes him think of the poems and dreams of a poet. Um, uh, if, if you go to uh, like a sacred church or a temple, they're beautiful candles, right? So she makes him think of the fire in a temple. Uh, she makes him think of water, of um, the beautiful vines in a lovely old tree. Um, she makes him think of the veena. The veena is a musical instrument, I like this. So she makes him think of the beautiful music of a veena, of color. So in India, um, they do uh, what's called rangoli which is a color with which you can adorn the, um, well, like right in front of your door. In India, it's very common to put beautiful patterns of lots of color. So this is the Rangoli. <coughs> Excuse me, she, she does not make him think of a sneeze. Don't worry, that was just me. Um, and what else? Uh, what else is this? Oh, she makes him think of the um, aroma, the smoke, of sandalwood. Sandalwood is a beautiful tree which has a, a very beautiful scent. So when I do this, this is the scent of sandalwood. Um, and also there is a, a silken thread. In India, um, women wear saris, which is a, like a dress like this. It goes around your back, around your shoulder, and very often they're made of silk. So she makes them think of a silken thread. Oh, of the music sung by fairies at night. So these are just the fairies, the sparks of light. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, you'll see, you'll see the man approach. Well, he doesn't really approach her. He's looking at her from a distance. And then you'll see the woman. And she may be a princess too. So I, I put in there some jewelry that she's wearing. And she's, she's looking at herself in, in a mirror. Ah, but she also, she loves to read. 
She loves to think and dream. So this is a woman. And the man, the way I've described him, he doesn't know how to speak to her, if you should speak to her, um, like that. So I think that's the dance, so I hope you enjoy it. My mom is over here in the corner. I'm going to ask her to turn it on so I can start as soon as the dance starts. So here. Okay, I think it's fine now. Okay. Technical issue, sorry. <laughs>
hands. And now we are going to show you some more contrast. Um, in India, as I mentioned, we wear saris. So uh, my mom is going to drape a sari around me and we'll show it how show you how one sari can be seen in a couple of different ways. Hi. Hello. Okay, this is something funny. So Nathana is going to wear a ribbon around her waist because we don't have a long slip right now. That would take a longer time. Normally, we wear petticoats under the sari. So this is a lovely color, green. So I'm going to show you, first of all, many of the ladies in India, how they wear saris. Okay, now, she's going to tuck this in front of her like this. This is the way all over India people wear, girls, I mean, girls and women, they wear saris like this. Okay, turn around and turn around. All right. One has to learn to make pleats to wear saris. So this is the way, because I've been doing it for so long, I can do it pretty fast. This could be, this is, it could be in a soft cotton material, or it could be heavy silk, or just chiffon, or any kind of material. And then she's going to tuck the whole thing inside. Turn around. It will move back a little bit. Yeah. There you go. And then she's going to have this that way. That is the way in, in India, many, many women wear saris all over India. Now let me show you the contrast between how sometimes they wear different type in South India. I'll take it out and then turn around. Once again, we take out the same sari. And what we're going to do is we're going to tuck this material at the back instead of the front. Turn around. Okay. This is the way it is tucked here at the back. And, okay, now, give me the material like this. We are going to make pleats at the back. Here we go. Take the pleats like this. Make them into a bunch of pleats. And tuck it at the back like this. We're going to tuck the pleats at the back and then now turn around. Hold it. Now do like this. Give me the material at the back. And there we go. And then put a pin here. Like this. That way. So there is a contrast. The same material is draped in a different way in South India. Now let's go to the Bombay style. In Bombay they were in a different way. Now that same material I'm going to take out. And then we're going to start once again. Tuck the material in the front. Tuck in the front. Right, there you go. Now take it around, turn around, turn around. Okay, I'm going to make the place in the front here like this and it's a six yard material well it's pretty long isn't it but it's very nice sari is one of the most graceful styles of that uh, in indian uh, costume indian drapery like draping around now take it around and instead of sari going on the left shoulder this is going to go on the right shoulder. There we go. Like this, and tuck it here. So that is the Bombay style. I hope you enjoyed all these three styles. You can try it at home with a bed sheet. <laughs>
small spreadsheet. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and um, uh, one thing I wanted to say is that most saris are around the same size, around six yards, although you can have longer as well. But um, and a six yard sari can fit anyone. That's what's so magical about saris. You know, whether you're big, tall, small, short, it doesn't really matter. The sari is one size fits all. You could say it's sort of made for contrast. And there are all sorts of contrasts also between the materials. I mean, this is a, a I think, polyester. But there is, there's so many variety of materials and colors. If you go to a sari shop in India, or even in the States, if you go to a sari shop in Chicago or something, you'll be blown away by the variety of saris. A lot of contrast. That's what makes the world beautiful. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you would like to see any of our videos or learn more about us, go to dancesofindiastl.org. We have a big performance this November uh, 2021. We, it's, we have an annual performance um, each fall. And we will, be, we will follow all COVID safety protocols. We are Missouri Art Safe certified. Um, so I hope you can come and join us. Thank you. Bye. All right, thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned something new about contrast. And if you enjoyed what you saw today, please come in to CAM and see it in person. All right, we will see you next time. Bye.